The last episode was all about Tony and his family's struggles when Tony got missing. In this seventh episode, we are going to see what all will happen to Jeff after he got released from the prison. A scene from first episode is the beginning of this episode. The scene where Tracy escapes out of Jeff's apartment, screaming that somebody help, which Glenna hears and opens her door to look what happened. When she suddenly finds Jeff there, she gets scared and goes back to her apartment. She stood in her room, scared, not knowing what to do next. Glenda was curious about what really was happening in Jeff's apartment. So she decides to go to Jeff's home and tries to knock his door. But then she didn't do it as she was afraid of him. So she returns to her apartment back. She then finds Tracy returning with two policemen and arresting Jeff later. Thus when Jeff is arrested and taken away she becomes angry at the police, saying that she tried to call them a lot of times. She says angrily. I would have called you like a 100 times, you people didn't want to come here, leave coming, you didn't even care, you avoided me because I'm black, now didn't you understand what's really going on in his apartment? A morning, Glenda looks out through the window and sees a crowd including people and police gathered outside, suddenly she hears somebody knocking on the door, and when she opens the door, she sees a police officer outside, the police officer says, ma'am you have to leave as soon as possible, this whole place is sealed, Glenda asks, what are you saying? Where can I go? The police says, you have to cooperate with us ma'am, and he tries to leave. Glenda preventing the police from leaving, asks, just a moment, how many dead bodies did you really find from his apartment? The police doesn't reply and leaves. Then Glenda packs her things and leaves. Meanwhile, two police officers goes to their chief officer. They tells their chief about Jeff. Then chief asks them, so how many bodies did you really find from there? The police replies, sir, he killed a total of 17 people. From that we were able to identify 11 of them, as he had their IDs with him. And also sir, we found a 14-year-old child's body too. The chief says with great surprise, Oh my god, is there even humans like this? Later, the chief tells everything to the judge. The judge wondered and said, I can't believe that a single person did all these, all by himself. Then judge continues to ask chief. I read an article today which said, despite a lady already informed everything about Jeff, the police didn't take any action against him. Who is that woman? The police says, sir, she is Glenda. She is Jeff's neighbor. But because she was a black woman, my police didn't take any action because they thought she is making up all that as he was a white man. The judge says, just now I received a complaint call from the Human Rights Commission, saying, you people don't even consider the blacks as humans. You and your team have to answer them too. A reporter had taken Glenda's interview about Jeff, as she was his neighbor. In that report, it was also added that, just because she was a black, nobody cared what she said. Because of that, the Human Rights Commission got complaint claiming that, white people doesn't consider black people at all. That's what the chief and judge are discussing about. In the next scene, the FBI officers goes to the families of Jeff's victims and informs them that Jeff murdered them all. The police says, you don't have to wait for them anymore. We caught a serial killer the other day. Jeff's victims included your sons and brothers. Hearing this, the victims' families started crying. Some of them even got angry over the officers and said, my son is dead. What are you even saying? A human rights commission officer going to meet Glenda is the next scene. Then they goes to an open space to talk. The officer says, Glenda, didn't you give an interview to a reporter for an article? From that, we got to realize that whites are not valuing the blacks. It has become a case now. Can you please explain what really happened in your apartment? Glenda says whatever she told to the reporter about the 14-year-old boy who ran out naked from Jeff's apartment. When she approached that boy, she understood that he was drugged. She called the police immediately and said that something illegal is happening in Jeff's house. But nobody believed her. Instead, they believed Jeff. It seems they had enough evidence to believe that the small boy was Jeff's boyfriend. Glenda sadly asked. The cops believed him as he was a white. Don't we blacks have any rights here? The officer leaves saying that, Glenda, we are here to help you. We will fight for you. Two people traveling in a car is the next scene. One was a young lawyer, and the other was the Christian community leader and Bishop Jackson. The lawyer says, I can't understand why are you interfering in this case. Jackson says, I have interfered in many other cases like this. What's the problem with this case? Lawyer says, you interfered in political cases before. Why a serial killer's case now? I can't understand that. Jackson says, this is indeed a serial killer case. 
but it also becomes a political case as it deals about black people and their problems. First of all, most of Jeff's victims were blacks. Secondly, a black woman have constantly tried to complain about Jeff, which nobody really cared. We can't leave it like that. We can understand that, Jackson is actually trying to help that black woman. Then they goes to see the judge. The police chief was sitting there too. Then they talks about Jeff. Jackson says to the judge, Sir, the reason I directly got involved in this case is because I found your police have tried to taunt a section of people out there. This situation of blacks people being mistreated has to be changed. If you people had listened to her that day, a serial killer would haven't killed these many people today. Chief says, yes, you are right. I am apologizing because my police officers behaved that way. Did you investigate that woman Glenda who gave the interview? Jackson says, no, we haven't seen her yet. Jackson going to Glenda's home is the next scene. Glenda was surprised seeing Jackson, as he was a big famous leader. Jackson then asks about her. Glenna says, aren't you the president now for that Christian community? I had voted you twice, which you won too. Jackson becomes happy hearing that. Then Jackson comes to the main point of his arrival. Jackson asks, we heard you from the interview you gave to a reporter for an article. We now have to know about how much did you actually complain about Jeff? and how much the authorities avoided you. Can you please tell me about that? Glenda says, I've tried a lot to talk about Jeff to the police, they never cared, they didn't want to. I'm really disappointed with their behavior. With already the fierce present in Glenda, she says a lot about Jeff and the police's complete disregard. After the incident of that 14 years old boy, Glenda was sitting in her room, watching TV. Suddenly a smell comes from the ventilation hole. When Glenda asks Jeff about it, he says it's the smell of rotten pork. I'll remove it soon, and then Jeff shuts the door. The next day she bought groceries to home and her hands were full. A boy named Dean came that way and helped Glenda with the grocery bags. Then he keeps the bags at Glenda's home and leaves. Jeff notices that and goes to meet him. Meanwhile Glenda overhears what they are talking. Glenda realizes Jeff's next prey is Dean. A night Jeff goes to Dean's room. Jeff says Dean, I'm going to a pub nearby. Will you come with me? We'll have a lot of fun together. Dean agrees and goes with Jeff to the pub. It became midnight. Glenda was about to sleep. Glenda notices Jeff and Dean coming from the pub. Then she goes to sleep. Suddenly she wakes up hearing a scream from Jeff's room. The scream was nothing else but Jeff killing Dean. She quickly calls the police. The police asks her what happened through the phone. Glenna says, I just now woke up hearing a scream from the next room. Please come here quickly. The police asks her, do you hear any sound now? Glenna says, no, I don't hear anything now. The police says, all right then, I'll send two police officers tomorrow. Glenda wondered and asks, you are sending them only tomorrow. You have to come right now. There will be nothing left tomorrow. But the police says, sorry, we don't have enough officers here. As it is night, we can only come tomorrow. And then the police hangs up the call. After some days, Glenda was going upstairs to her room. She notices letters filled in the mailbox. When she goes to check who haven't read this much letters for these many days, she finds out that all of it was for Dean. She takes all that letters to the residential president of that apartment. He was a young guy. Together they goes to Dean's apartment, but Dean didn't open his door, even though they called out him a lot. They understands that Dean is not there. Glenna says, all these letters are for Dean. He haven't took any of these for the past two weeks. I last saw him two two weeks before, on a night, coming with Jeff from a pub. I haven't seen him ever after that. Then she takes him to her room and says about the strange smell that comes from Jeff's apartment to hers. Glenna says, do you two can't sense the smell? I said about this to everybody. Nobody even cared. My daughter is living with her boyfriend because of this stink. At least you should understand me. Please remove him from this place. Please. Then he goes to knock at Jeff's door. And he opens. He gives a paper to Jeff. It was a notice saying that. Jeff must leave that apartment. Jeff becomes angry on him and says. What does this mean? Why suddenly? What did I do? Doesn't I pay rent properly on time? He says. You have to agree. The decision is of the whole committee. You have 30 days time. You should leave with within that time period. When he tries to leave Jeff says, isn't this Glenda's plan? You came here to me because of her. Right. Isn't she the one who told you to remove me from this apartment? Glenda sitting in her room is the next scene. She hears somebody knocking on her door and she goes to open the door. It was Jeff. She was a bit scared as she also thought that he might do her something. She asks him, what's the matter? Jeff says, Glenda, you have to take back your complaint on removing me. I won't disturb you again. Glenda says, too late Jeff. I can't take it back. 
and then she starts to shut her door. Jeff stops the door with his hand and says, I want to enter your room. Glenda didn't allow. Jeff says, didn't you complain saying that it's stinking? I need to investigate that. Thus Glenda opens the door and Jeff enters. He had a gift box with him. Glenda asks about it. Jeff says, this is a gift for you, and then goes to sit on the sofa. But as Glenda was reluctant to go and sit with him, Jeff forces her to do so, and she sits eventually. He opens the present box, it was a sandwich for Glenda, Jeff asks her to eat that. But Glenda refuses because she was afraid that he might have poisoned it. She says, I'll have it later. Jeff says, you are like my mother Glenda, I won't bring you any problem, and I didn't find any strange smell here, so you have to take back your complaint. Glenda asks, what's with all the screaming from your room? Jeff says, do you hear screaming? Oh, that might be me screaming from seeing nightmares. That's just a misunderstanding. Standing. Glenda starts inquiring. Where is that small boy you told us is your boyfriend? And what about Dean? I saw him some days before coming with you from the pub and never saw him again. Where is he? Jeff replies. I broke up with my boyfriend. I don't know anything about him anymore. I don't know about Dean either. He might have gone for some trip. Glenda says, these aren't proper answers to my questions at all. If you give me detailed explanations of where they are and what happened to them, I promise, I'll take back my complaint. Jeff is really annoyed by her interrogation. He forces her to eat the sandwich. Glenda sternly refused to eat it and tells him to leave her home right away. Glenda eventually had to raise her voice. Jeff becomes angry and leaves. The next day night, Glenda hears a scream again. She realized that Jeff is going to kill someone. She took her phone, called the police right away and says, Sir, there's something going on here. It could even be a murder. You have to come this instant. Police asks, ma'am, can you go there and confirm what really is happening there? Glenda says to confirm, if I go there I'm dead, he'll kill me. You have to come here quickly. Police starts to hang up the call saying, I'm sending cops there. Glenda angrily says, you didn't even ask me where this is happening. Are you even listening to me? You seems completely disinterested. Why don't you ever listen to me? That night, she goes to sleep but she was unable to. She was crying instead because she had a psycho killer next to her room. She was not sure about how long will she survive with that killer living near her house. Just think about the scenario where you are living in a home, adjacent to a home in which a monster lives inside. Imagine how Glenda would have lived there. All this was Glenda explaining to Jackson. Glenda sadly says, I told the police about all this a million times. Nobody heard me. Jackson says, I will hear you. So would this police and world would hear about Jeff the monster and this discrimination against blacks from you. Glenna starts crying about what all she went through in her life. Jackson consoles her. This episode not only talked about Jeff's brutal murders, but also the rights of blacks. The whole series clearly depicts the discrimination that existed in the US society. So this episode ends here. We will be back with the next episode.